board with Sergei Sorotkin. So you see the huge amount of wheel spin that Alex Lin had in front of the Russian driver. Also having a look at the superb start of Latifi alongside. And then it got very close indeed, as you see the long run to turn one. The Frenchman battling for the lead. And Latifi was very oh, brave. Look how close that was. Right. And he had to use the Astro Turf. He's getting closer, but it's not going to be enough. And Nato is doing enough lap after lap in that final set, where he looks very close now. But these are the Ooh. corners. Oh, he's almost nudging him through. Not yet. <laughs> and it's all off that final corner. It's all the traction off that final corner, because you could see... Oh, oh he spun it! He oh, spun around! No. He takes his hand off the steering wheel. Oh, and he was so close to getting collected. He's going to be accelerating out of turn two. He can see second place, and then around he goes. And that's what I was talking about. He knew. Sorry, guys. I don't know how it was possible. But sorry. Sorry, sorry. Oh, listen to that. That is a broken man the corner and I mean look no one's gonna be more angry more disappointed than himself he knows that on the biggest stage he's just Looking around the outside we go on board now though with Sorokin from the back Sorokin and have a look oh. further up so close to contact but on the right of your picture a slow starting Norman Nato won the race yesterday started in eighth position he has dropped down to 19th so our race winner yesterday, really, really struggling as Sorokin tried to steam around the outside. That was the route he was going to take, and you see him get squeezed. Sorokin is up to 17. Given by Galal, who shuts the door. Here is Sergei Sorokin making amends, carving his way through the field. Yeah, it's interesting how some drivers respond. Here's how Sergei Sorokin moved himself up to 15th position past one of the six rookies in the field this is Marvin Kirchhofer in front of us and Sorokin slides through to the confidence confidence begatting uh, confidence we run board with Sorokin I think he's going to put a move on oh, that's beautiful on Giovinazzi up the inside at uh, Sandberg corner <laughs> we see it once again down the inside and Giovinazzi knew it was coming get airborne we're on board with Sorokin he's putting a fine drive together as he gets ever closer nerfing Evans through this sector you can oh, see he's nearly that. right up to him all about keeping it neat and tidy taking as little as possible out of the tires but if he gets a strong exit it's going to be really difficult for Mitch Evans to defend that this man is only in 14th place that is a really strong drive win today and Givinazzi thinking about it, and Sorokin's had enough, he's going to the inside, he's going to barge his way past Mitch Evans. Far back, should never have a go really, and I think he, he had a, a look at Giovinazzi trying to go through and thought, well, if I don't make it now, then Giovinazzi's going to get me. The really long straight we have here at the circuit of Catalonia, and meanwhile, Oli Roland is making a move in the foreground. He's level with Latifi, and he is up the order, as is Machu Shita, who goes past, and Sorokin's following. So they're all finally going on the attack in the final laps of the sprint race. Sorokin up to 11th. This is some drive. Yeah, this is a great drive from Sorokin. Ten places up from his starting position. We're underway with a really good start for Norman Nato, who's immediately into the lead. And the racing engineering car of Jordan King trying to follow his way through. It's Nato who wins the battle for turn one. Are they all going to get through? It's Sorokin down to second, down the road, and he's got the jump he needed. Sorokin, who wanted to win it. So, and he's he closed in. How is that possible? How is that possible? I'm back. And you, you could hear how distressed he was, oversteer on the exit of the swimming pool. Yeah, he touched too much the curb, he was too aggressive on the left curve, uh, curb on the outside, and you jump over it, you lose the rear, and you crash against the barret. Uh, really using, um, often, often happens here that... For the sprint race in Monaco, we're underway, and it's a poor start for Matrushita that's going to get the lead. Is it for Kirkhoff, or it's going to be so close? Who's going to win the battle for turn one? It's a lock off for Matrushita, but he's held on to the lead into turn one. And we've got Sergei Sorokin out again. Wow, what an absolutely disastrous weekend for the man who was on pole position. Let's see what happened. 
He's already slow by this point. And Sorokin, who crashed at the exit of the swimming pool, sees his exit. We have five lights, they're out, and we're underway, but a really poor start. And so much wheel spin for our pole sitter. And Nobuhara Matsushita is into the lead with Giotto challenging his countryman, Marcello. I'm in the second, and Norman Nato spins around the championship leader. Raffaele Marcello, who is ahead, and that's going to get very tight indeed. He's going to get himself up, and now Jordan King is trying to make his way through. And we didn't expect them to be battling this hard, but they are. Matsushita going deep into the corner. Giotto's got the inside line. Has he got the position? And he is through and up into fourth until the two kilometers straight the next time around. Down the inside goes Sergei Sorokin, trying to get his championship challenge up and running. One of the preseason favorites. And Jeffrey now on this back section. Here's Matsushita fighting back against Giotto, who's gone defensive to the inside line. And Matsushita's gone off. Can he keep it out on the wall? He can, but he's surely going to lose a position to his teammate, Sergei Sorokin, who's down the inside. And Sorokin moving up to fifth position, who thought he had the move complete for fourth, and finds himself losing a position. Sorokin this time trying to make a move without the use of DRS. And Giotto to fourth position and he is defending from two cars you never want to see in your rear view mirrors the ARTs of Matsushita who knows he's got the pace to compete but he's been caught out on restarts and yellow flags and single waved yellows down thought to have another accident he's feeling enormous pressure he says he wasn't able to sleep before after the accident but he's up through the order now and he's got hold of fourth place Ollie Rowland is waiting in the background. We think he could have overtaken from the safety car line. Definitely trying to move immediately. Sergei Sorokin, who wants a podium. It would be his first of the year. Giovinazzi's locked to break. Is he going to make the corner? Could be crucial. He's not going to make the corner. Oh, he's gone in deep. Has he lost the lead? No, he's just about maintained it. He's squeezing his countrymen to the wall. And there's going to be contact. We're on board with Ollie Rowland. Is he going to make the corner? Oh, my word, only just. And Giovinazzi somehow has clung on to the lead. When we're on the penultimate lap of the race, as Mitch Evans going side by side by Nobuhara Matsushita, Giovinazzi leading Raffaele Marcello Sorokin. A lock up on Goliath. Are they all going to make it through minor contact but they are Roland this is third place is it going to become fourth is Sorokin there and he's been tagged is the steering okay it looks to be all right Mitch Evans is he going to throw one to the inside he isn't and is he going to be passed around the outside Sorokin going for it and defensive from Marcello for second of turn one like Giovinazzi doing an absolutely thrilling race is Sorokin going to try and move up to second place? He's in the slipstream, as we see, coming across the line to take the checkered flag. It's Antonio Giovinazzi, and Sorokin outdrags Raffaele Marcello to take second on the line. It's like Monza in the 1960s. Racing, five red lights, and we're underway in Azerbaijan for the sprint race. A really poor start for Galil and De Jong. Is Matsushita going to be able to get into the lead? He's forced his way through at turn one to go from third to first in a matter of meters. De Jong down to second. It's Evans who's up to third, and Ollie Rowland has got himself up to fourth. And that's Marcello going wide. Has to be careful on the exit. So a change for the lead absolutely immediately. And he's benefiting at the moment. This was the move for sixth position, for fifth position, I should say, as the ART went past the Campos. Here's Sorokin on Mitch Evans, breaking down ahead in the braking zone and moving up into fourth position in this race. Overtake it, and he's caught the safety car. That's going to give it an enormous opportunity to Daniel de Jong, who's in the slipstream. And look at Ollie Rowland, he's just streamed through into the lead, but he's locked up, and there could be contact. De 
Young is off the road at turn one. Ollie Rowland is in the lead, but Matsushita somehow loads of cars off. Loads of cars off at turn number one in dramatic oh, fashion. The safety car once again. He had to slow down. He lost the lead, and here comes Sorokin for second place. So Ollie Rowland was in the lead moments ago. He's now down to third position in this race. He might have gained it fortuitously, but his heart will sink. There it is. So you can overtake from that line there, and we're underway once again with green flag racing in Baku. Oh, it's going to be an accident there. That's Malia losing his front wing, and we could have a huge accident. They were all uncertain. Kanamasas losing debris. Losing his front wing, cold tyres once again. Gasly somehow has managed to get himself. Oh, and Ollie Rowland's been clobbered. Chaos once again at turn one. Sorokin has lost a chunk of his nose. Was that to the back of his teammate, Matsushita, somehow? Are we going to go racing once again? And so the rest of the field waiting this time for Matsushita, who has gone, who has dropped the hammer and leads this race with Raffaele Marcello up to second. Is Gassi going to try it into turn one? Marcello's wristed and there's contact from the lead. Nobuhara Matsushita's torrid day comes to an end at turn one. Raffaele Marcello hit him as well and spun. And our leader, unbelievably, having started in 18th position. And we're underway in Austria with a good start for Giovinazzi. It's another poor getaway from Paul for Sorokin. And both Prima boys are alongside, trying to make a difference as Nato comes streaming through. It's Giovinazzi into the lead. Gasly into second place and contact immediately for Kanamasas at the back of the field. Will we have a safety car? Sorokin trying to come back as we've got a Trident. Gasly and Sorokin side by side as they head up the hill to turn two. An enormous drag here. Breaking Gasly has he is he gonna tough it out? Well, he can't afford to have contact and so Rockin gets blocked as much Roland has gone gone past oh. and here we see Sir Rockin battling for the lead. So it's so wet. They're barely moving To fifth position past Artem Markolov and that's a move for second place Sir Rockin not with the tire temperature that he needs at this stage and Raffaele Marcello moves up into second placed by Russian time as Marcello, who we've seen superb in uh, track conditions like this before, as Oli Roland tries to take third place away. To be honest, with Marcello, is doing a really good job by leading. And Markolov down the inside of Sorokin, who's really struggling as well. Synchronization. You see, even those went off. Oh, it's five guys they went off in a row. And Luca Giotto on this lap, and he's tucked right underneath him. Oli Roland, very close to Ericsson as well. Here comes Norman Nato alongside Sorokin up the hill. Of course, it's still wet on the inside line. You can see that, and Nato nice gets past and up into seventh place. Yeah, very nice move, very nice move. You can see how close Nato is to his teammate. Not the exit from turn nine that Jordan King would want as he leads us over the line to start lap four. Is he going to maintain the lead? He's not in the part of the racetrack he'd want to be. Into turn one, he'll be very slow indeed off turn one. That is indeed the case. And they're coming for him as they go up to two side by side. In ninth place, this is how he made it eighth past Jimmy Erickson. Really putting in a sterling performance. Evans having to go defensive, so Rockin with a run, but he'll have to do it around the outside. That's near impossible. Oh, so Rockin we're on board with as Lynn squeezes through. Up into eighth place for Alex Lynn. Still, somehow, Evans and Nato are side by side. And wide goes Nato to lose the place, not only to Evans, who squeezes Alex Lynn to the pit wall, but Nato losing places to Sorokin and Gasly. Lynn going to the outside line, trying to get himself up to fourth in this race. Meanwhile, we focus on Evans in sixth, Latifi in seventh, eighth is Sorokin, and we're so close to contact. Pierre Gasly saying the track is drying fast. Is anyone going to gamble? Nato and Giovinazzi have swapped positions in the background there. And Latifi coming under huge pressure with a spin in the background there. Let's focus for the moment on Sorokin getting past Latifi.
That's for seventh place in this crazy motor race. But they did work it out. So here's Gasly trying to get a run on Sergei Sorokin. Gasly looking for seventh place. Who's going to yield into this corner? No one's really yielding at all. Gasly keeping his foot in. He'll have great momentum. Gasly trying to go round the outside. But he's found himself off the racetrack and he is out of what was 10th position at the start of this lap. We're on board with the seventh place man, Sergei Sorokin. Could the talented young Italian have gone up the order? Well, we'll never know. But what we do know is he's battling Sergei Sorokin. And he is so strong into this corner. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, on the hard tyre that has won the race, Evans in 2014 started on the hard, Sorokin. And we're underway with a good start for Jordan King. Nato immediately on the defensive, Matushita up to second place, thinking about the lead, but it's King who maintains first position into turn one as Roland immediately disappearing. And there we see the contact. This is what the stewards are investigating. Russian on Russian. Rear right is broken, rear right is broken. Uh, looks like a puncture, looks like a puncture. Nato to release. Just an absolute nightmare and just didn't get away at all, did he? Sergei Sorokin in the ART. Here's his teammate appearing, and it's so close. You see a bit of a lockup and a nervy moment there for Nobuhara Matsushita, but they just about. Sirokin is pushing Norman Nato. He's fourth at the moment. Alpha second behind him, and we remember that he. Sorokin now. You see he's gaining on him, but not quite enough down into turn one. So that's the advantage of DRS. He's going to get it once again because he's within a second. And we now look back to the racetrack. Wonderful stop from ART. Really slick stuff. Exactly what you'd expect from the reigning team champions. There's Giovinazzi. He's going to get past. But Nato, who he's so close with, he's got the initial line. Is he going to risk it? He hasn't got tyre temperature. And he can't break as late as he would want to. And Norman Nato just doing enough to maintain track position position over Sorokin who's weaving about and he knows that he's gonna have to attack in the next lap if he's gonna have any real opportunity in order to get past and this is Nato and Sorokin Sorokin is he gonna risk it to the inside he's forced Nato wide he's gonna try and hang on and Sorokin makes the move I said he was gonna have to do it for the final podium position let's see how it happened down into two really well done because he went on the inside and then he breaks so deep but he didn't open the line in the mid corner now we check it out maybe no man Nato didn't close the the line he went too open and then Sirotin there on the inside really well done aggressive so way down the order uh, irrelevant for the points but this isn't this is Sorokin trying to carve his way through the field and get on turns with Giovinazzi in front and in the background there you saw a glimpse of peak all over the back of his countryman Nato and another Italian rookie in the field we're on board with him Antonio Giovinazzi of Prima and he's got Sorokin. South Torres, so we can be one second faster than you, Pierre Gasly, and then Giovinazzi, and then Sir Cotting. They try, they have to try to pull out and um, try to close the gap. Is to attack, and you can see he's coming out in what looks to be a net fourth position. Sorokin still all over the back. Three seconds behind Sirotkin and that in theory is third at the moment. So it will be interesting to understand if the soft tires give him the chance to come back and to close the gap to them. So remember last year, this is exactly the situation that Alex Lynn found himself in. He started late on the prime tire, came in. Uh, he just had to forget everything and try to be competitive tomorrow. Because we remember that was really good, the race for Giotto in Silverstone. Great race one, uh, but here, yeah, seems that uh, it's not really competitive. And then too many little mistakes and sometimes really big because uh, he locked the front wheel. For the 
sprint race in Budapest. We're underway with a slow getaway for King, but it's better in the second phase of the start. He maintains the lead. Matsushita is the man on the move, though. Diving to the inside, looking for second place. They're weaving all over the place. Look at this from Sorokin. He's got a pair of them. So close to contact, and it will be contact between Giovinazzi and Matsushita off the road with Raffaele Marcello. For that, perhaps, this is Sorokin immediately. Superb reaction time, chance to adjust his crash helmet as well. And he's got Matsushita on the inside. How close was this to contact? Very close indeed, but that is how he got himself up from sixth on the grid to second in the race. With King locking up, heading wide, King heading off the racetrack. What will Sorokin do as the safety car comes in? He knew he couldn't overtake. There's the safety car line, but King under enormous pressure immediately. Giovinazzi has come into the pits. Sorokin showed good awareness now not to breeze past because he would have received a penalty, but he's got an opportunity now to fight for the lead. King knows he has to go defensive. Sorokin trying to go to the outside. What's King got in terms of defense? He's got the inside line, but has Sorokin got the momentum? It certainly looks as if he has at the moment. It's going to be oh so close heading down to turn two. He's going to have to do it around the outside and still they haven't sorted it out as Jordan King says you're not coming through there. But gets a massive swap on and this could be a huge opportunity around the outside and still after three corners there's nothing to separate them who blinks first into turn four is jordan king and the lead brilliantly belongs to sorokin who knew he needed to get it done as soon as possible the lockup on cold tires from jordan king promotes sorokin to the lead and he had to fight for it for the title he's going to get his campaign up and running it's a first victory of the season for sorokin We're underway with a really poor start for Pierre Gasly. He's going to get absolutely engulfed off the line. Meanwhile, Sorokin with a decent getaway. Marcello. Two, and now he's got it as they head to the hairpin. Sorokin knows it. He's going defensive, looking in his mirrors, going to the inside line. Marcello trying to go the long way round at the hairpin, but he'll run out of road and he knows it. There's a very tall curb there. And Marcello right in the wheel tracks now. And Sorokin driving on his mirrors. Got the DRS open. Is he going to dive to the inside? Sorokin placing his car in the middle of the racetrack, forcing himself to the tighter line and for another time at least. But he's very slow off the corner, having to weave once again having to go defensive has Marcello got the momentum nothing between them as they go through the fast kink down to turn eight is Marcello going to try for the lead he's taken the lead out breaking without the use of DRS and Sir Rockin's defense now when was that virtual safety car deployed because that is crucial because the rule book says you're not allowed to do that the rule book says you are not allowed to pit under the virtual safety car and okay referee mortal absolutely crucial and Will Nato know about that? You see, we always see this under the virtual safety car. They all bunch together. They weren't this close a few moments ago. This is the somewhat random nature. And Nato surely with a run to the inside. He knows that that's the only place to get past. And that's exactly where he's made the move past Sorokin. He's got the momentum. Has he got the position? No, because Latifi is defending expertly. But the problem is that only works with one. Terrific run now for Sorokin down the inside. It's going to get so swing. close into the high-speed kink of seven. They go down to eight somehow, having not made contact as Nato runs out Sorokin. Keep pushing. We don't know if we're going to get a penalty yet. We do not know, OK? Maybe he's hanging back a little bit. Terrific momentum for the Frenchman in the racing engineering. Latifi tries to go defensive, but this time Nato's wise to it, and it could be losing two places and it absolutely is for Latifi who first fifth position away as Sorokin thinking about the move and he knows what he's going to get if he tries it into seven so he waits and he'll have to wait a little bit longer because Nato for him isn't it as he removes a tear off visor at high high speed in the toe with DRS open this time to the inside and it will be and he keeps him out there i love sirotkin i love this guy that's sergey sirotkin the first pit stop will not count as the mandatory pit stop so 
he has to come in one more time in this race. Okay, it's VSC. Did you pit under VSC? Sergey, we need to know if he definitely pitted under VSC, but we didn't hear you correctly, did you? I did not see it. What it was, the last panel was, was not up there. And into the pits. So here we go. This is the crucial moment of the race. They've stopped arguing about it on the radio. They've come in, and with the evidence of the LED boards, into the it's not the mandatory pit stop. I would have thought that he ended up with the penalty as he comes back onto the racetrack in fourth position. Behind Nato, he thought he was going to have a terrific opportunity. Oli Roland heads behind Giotto, who isn't being slowed down at all at the moment. So Giotto gets himself up to third. Giovinazzi. Here comes Sorokin. As we see Nato spin, Sorokin up to second position, making the move at the hairpin. He is through, and his eventful afternoon just will not end. Marcello is coming, is coming. Two seconds per lap, quicker than Raffaello. Marcello at the moment. So Sorokin is on fire. Is it? Is he oh. going to try it? Under braking, Sorokin going for the lead. They're not going to collide, oh. are they? Is Marcello going to yield? They're side by side as they come out of the corner. Marcello knows he can't afford to give it up, and he doesn't give it up. These two have been racing at the start of the race, and they're drawing this fantastic feature to a close. We get more wheel-to-wheel -wheel action, but Sorokin, who's made two stops, he's got the tyre advantage, he's got the pace advantage, and he's all over the back of Raffaele Marcello, who knows he has to go over the debris to the defensive line as they go into the stadium section. Fantastic defense, fantastic no. attack. Is he going to try it for the oh. same for the lead? He locks up, he takes the lead. Yes, 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 yes. That was absolutely amazing. That was absolutely amazing. And they're going wheel to wheel racing as once again we look at the huge amount of wheel spin that Giovinazzi got. And then look at the tank slapper almost that we saw from Gustav Malia in the Rapax. Somehow they both survive. Malia desperately trying to cling on to what would be his first podium in the series. Malia knows the move is coming, goes defensive, and there's nothing he can do, though. Sorokin right around the outside. So much more speed with the use of DRS. Sorokin with DRS open. He's looked fast on any compound, and he's so close to Oli Roland, who knows he's got to go defensive, but is it going to be a case of defending thin air again? Roland is very, very smart on the apex of the corner, and he defends the position. But Sorokin, once again, in the latter stages, is coming on strong, and Oli Roland knows he's got a real problem now. Sorokin banging on the door for second place. Rap hacks pit wall, battles all the way through the field. Roland going to defensive. This is for second place, remember. And that's opened the door. Oh, so close to contact there as the Rockin tries to go past Roland for second and was nearly collected by the fourth place man. Roland shutting the door. And we saw Jimmy Erickson forcing Marvin Kirkhofer off the road. They get slightly slow with applying the penalties, but it's a five place penalty for Jimmy Erickson as we see second. He's in the one minute 28, he's in the 129s. Once again, Ollie Roland is going defensive. This time, Sorokin taking a different approach and Tekken taking second place away from the British driver who will try to come back, but surely he's got the superior traction. No, Roland won't be denied. He's clinging on by his fingertips, but he's clinging on and he still has second place as Sorokin scratches his head and he'll try and work out what to do. Does he have the momentum now? Has Roland got the inside line? No, he's running out of tires and Sorokin finally gets up into second place.
So here we go, we've got Artem Markolov who's come through really strongly. He likes the hard compound a lot. He's got the move done and Sorokin demoted. This is for second on the road at the moment. And then bolt on the options you see here. Ollie Rowland, who's just been into the pits. He's got Sorokin, the man who is going to lose some ground surely to Gasly in the title battle, going past, taking the position on the alternate strategy. And still Sorokin and Roland going wheel to wheel. It got very close between these two. It got very tough between these two. But look at the drive that Sorokin's got. And has he got the position? He's not going to be friendly to Roland after what he did to him a few moments ago. And he's got back past. And Spa so many times. Sorokin's going to try and go right around the outside. It'd be a brave man if he did it. Last time on the last tour, we saw Sorokin taking advantage of the blocking from Kanamasas. Well, Roland is well positioned to do exactly that. With the use of DRS, he's going to try the round the outside. Will that open the door for Oli Roland? He's trying to take two cars in one corner. There's nothing between them. Still, they can't get past Kanamasas. Are they going to go three wide? No, just two wide with a better momentum. And this is going to be so very close indeed as they go into Oruj. And Sorokin knew who he was racing there. He backed out of it. And Kanamasas still somehow clinging onto the position. But it's going to open the door for Oli Roland. Remember, the guys behind are on the soft tyre. Kanamasas somehow making the hard rubber work for him as he goes super defensive to the inside. Oli Roland has the position. Sorokin tries to come back. And this has been corner. Uh, leading of the championship. Roland all over the road, bit of dust in the face of Sorokin. He knows he's running out of corners, but he does have an opportunity at the end of this race. Well, he's trying to go around the outside. Kanamasas desperately trying to hang on. Is he going to open the door for Sorokin? It might. It's contact between the pair of them. They're drifting wide. Oh, open at the end. And Sorokin comes over the line to take ninth place. You're up there, German friend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your insight. We will hear from Davide in a few moments. But look at this mess at the end of the race. Absolute carnage. Kanamasas gets himself in the mix. This is what it looked like from Sorokin's point of view, who wouldn't have believed his luck. He knew exactly what was happening between those two, didn't he? He saw that coming a mile off. The sprint race is underway with a really good start for the pole sitter. And it's a good start for Giovinazzi immediately up to second ahead of Giotto, who got too much wheel spin and drops the third. Markolov maintaining fourth position, and exactly as suspected, they were very well behaved through that first turn as they begin the run to Eau Rouge now. Markolov getting very close indeed, and I think just about edging out Alex Lynn, indeed he did, as they're going three wide at the top of the hill, always a hairy moment on the first lap of tyres and brakes, not yet up to temperature. Out. For Antonio Giovinazzi and Pierre Gasly has damaged his front wing. Exactly what he couldn't afford to do. There goes the end plate. There goes the top element. To 195 miles an hour. You can see the effect of DRS in the slipstream. And Roland just putting the car to the middle of the racetrack and saying, that's my defense. You're going to have to get a lot closer than that. In the last couple of years, he's made up for it today with a superb performance for Prima. Sorokin just wanted that point, and that was way too much speed into the final corner. Saw Kanamasas there arriving on the scene. He's seen all of that before. Desperate to slow it down, and he's got the hand out of the steering wheel. The stewards, of course, will take into account the speed that Markov had on the apex of the corner, but on first sight, that seems a pretty clear penalty for Sorokin. The decision for the stewards is whether he will apply a, a time penalty. We're underway for the feature race with a little bit of wheel spin for Gasly, but he's maintained the lead in the first part of the start. Markolov immediately going defensive. It's a good getaway for King. Can he make use of it? Peak as well. It's a 610 meter run to the first corner, and it's getting very close to contact. Indeed, there was between Gasly and Markolov, as many suspected there might be. And what sort of problem is that going to leave us around the outside? Peak was off the road as well. Nato has terrific form around this racetrack. He showed that last year with Arden, and he's really flying at the early stages. Sorokin having to go defensive. 
And is Nato, he, who is bold and brave with overtaking, and he's showing that once again with a superb move. So he's up to seventh position as Jordan King tries to follow his teammate through on Sorokin, who got a good start. Is Sorokin going to shut the door more aggressively than before? He can't. He can't close the door. Five lights for the 250th time in GP2. We're racing. It's a decent getaway for King, who leads immediately. Evans getting bogged down in his racing engineering. Collision there between Giotto and King. Uh, and Evans, I should say, as they came together. And it's Nato who's going to snatch the lead away from King. So racing engineering one and two, but it's Nato who gets the jump up from fourth to first in the matter of 610 meters as the guys in the pit lane join, but it's Nato King and Sorokin is out. One of the main championship contenders retires. He's ART with DRS disabled as a result. Five red lights, the feature race is moments away and he's underway now with a really poor start for Gasly and straight up into the lead goes Raffaele Marcello. Giovinazzi gets the jump as well. Gasly down to fourth, could get worse for him. Marcello into the lead as well. Sorokin is a risk, they're going side by side. The two Italians that Jordan Monza are going to get very close as well and Giovinazzi thought better of it. This will give an enormous opportunity to Sorokin if he can get the power down. But it's, uh, who is, yes, it's Norman Nato there who's threatening Sorokin on the exit of the corner and it's a really slow getaway. Giovinazzi now up into the lead. He's taken the lead back. Oh. Marcello knows he needs to win this race but plant it to the floor. He has to lift and Antonio Giovinazzi has the lead. Sorokin is up to second place. Well, we had to wait to get this race underway. Perfect. The entry of the pit lane for Giovinazzi. Anyway, well, the we, race is still there. We see that there's nothing really between them. I'm not sure if that would have cost him the lead but... And this is the risk, though, for the guys because they've got to make these moves on track and they can't afford any damage. They can't afford any time offline. And you can see that Giovinazzi is getting back in the same sort of region as Sergei Sorokin. Yeah, you're right. He has to be quick because Giovinazzi is closing the gap. He's losing time. Bianoni, he missed the overtakes. Ah, but he goes, he goes to the pit stop. He's so close. Remember what we said, if you get close in the final sector, he's going to have a brilliant opportunity with DRS all without. This is for the lead. Nothing between them. Centimeters between the cars. Oh, it's unbelievable. He's nearly made contact. He surely had to get out of it. And no DRS, so we have to tuck in again. He's nearly nudging him down the pit straight, side by side for the lead of the race, with hardly any time remaining in this feature race here. Sorokin with the inside line. Giovinazzi trying to take the lead back that he lost in the pit stops. Oh, Nothing between oh. them. Oh, he's nearly forced him off the road. And Antonio Giovinazzi takes the lead. Will they go out? Will we underway? Which we are now with a good start for Mitch Evans. Away well, but going well alongside Giotto momentarily into the lead. But they've got to get to the breaking zone. Who's going to risk it? Evans is going to risk it to take the inside line. Giotto and Evans side by side. They're on the front row together and now they're side by side into turn, turn three. And Evans will know he's got to get on, con on terms. He's got to get alongside right now as King attacks Marcello. And he can't do it. Norman flags out on the racetrack. Just checking the seats to look ahead and behind. <laughs> Just keep going, just keep going for now, Sergey. It's disappointment and retirement for the man who, remember, at the end of the July flurry of races was level. The title decider is underway with a poor start for Gassi, but good traction. Worse for Sorokin, who's fighting off his teammate. Gassi's done exactly what he needed to do and holds off. I thought he was slow initially off the line. Look now for Giovinazzi, who's in the middle, and he's got Norman Nato right alongside him. Got to think about the title. We saw contact. Anyway, he's flying at the moment. Look at the gap between the seven. So Pierre Gasly is making this work in a sizable way. Sorokin, instead of pressuring for the lead, he's trying to fend off his teammate for second place.
nothing between the two ARTs. It's been a difficult season for Nobuhara Matsushita ever since the difficulty of those safety car restarts in Azerbaijan. But now he's got a great toe. He's right in the rhythm of it now. He's got a chance to look to the inside. It's ART versus ART in a turn 11. And there was a late move there by Sorokin. Matsushita had to take, avoiding action. But for the moment, it's still Sorokin in second place. He's in the 153s. Nobuhara Matsushita is going up to second place to a 152.9. We're on board with Sorokin, who is now making his way through confirmation of Gasly's fastest lap. His only contender at the moment for that is Markelov, but that could all change. Eight laps of difference, and down the inside goes Sorokin. He makes it through easy as you like. And Matsushita going nicely at the front. And that is positive for Gasly, Giovinazzi and all the drivers that they use the normal strategy because it means but seems that these uh, white line tires uh, are performing really well because Matsushita start to be really quick. Giovinazzi going into turn three. We didn't see how that ended on board with Sorokin straight past. There's the side of the lead for him, and this is a really dangerous place to be on the apex of turn one. Frenchman as they go into the turn seven hairpin, and Sorokin throws one down the inside to take second place, or has he? They're about level in terms of momentum. Sorokin trying to give Nato the squeeze. Nato is a feisty customer when it comes to the braking zone, but it's exactly what Alex Lynn wanted. He knows how to win races. He checks the steering wheel. Uh, he checks the rear view mirror, I should say, and Sorokin has got through. MP and Carlin have missed out, but meanwhile, I think we know who's going to be in the top three, but what order are they going to be in? This is the battle for second place. Sorokin having to go super defensive. His tyres have really run out, and look, Chicotto just breezes by. And Johnny Chicotto, the super sub. Up to second place, can Sorokin come back? No, he can't. And the Venezuelan driver...